Okay. We're here, still here in Lukerbad. Trying to get Yorick a good placement here. And we're gonna keep reading. Act two, scene one of Love's Labor's Lost. I don't know what kind of view you have here. Let's see. Can you see those beautiful mountains? Now, madam, summon up your dearest spirits. Consider who the king your father sends. To whom he sends and what's his embassy? Yourself held precious in the world's esteem to parley with the sole inheritor of all perfections that a man may owe. Matchless Navarre, the plea of no less weight, than Aquitaine, a dowry for a queen. Be now as prodigal of all dear grace as nature was in making graces dear when she did starve the general world beside and prodigally gave them all to you. Good Lord Boyette, my beauty, though but mean, needs not the painted flourish of your praise. Beauty is bought by judgment of the eye, not uttered by base sale of Chapman's tongues. I am less proud to hear you tell my worth than you much willing to be counted wise in spending your wit in the praise of mine. But now to task the tasker, good Boyette. You are not ignorant to all telling fame, doth noise abroad, Navarre hath made a vow. Till painful study shall outwear three years, no woman may approach his silent court. Therefore, to us seemeth it a needful course, before we enter his forbidden gates, to know his pleasure. And in that behalf, bold of your worthiness, we single you as our best moving fair solicitor. Tell him the daughter of the King of France, on serious business craving quick dispatch, and Portune's personal conference with his grace. Haste, signify so much while we attend, like humble visaged suitors his high will. Proud of employment, willingly I go. All pride is willing pride, and yours is so. Who are the votaries, my loving lords, that are vow fellows with this virtuous duke, Longueville is one? Know you the man? I know him, madam. At a marriage feast between Lord Perigort and the beauteous heir of Jacques Falconbridge, solemnized in Normandy, saw I this Longueville. A man of sovereign parts he is esteemed, well fitted in the arts, glorious in arms. Nothing becomes him ill that he would well. The only soil of his fair virtue's gloss, if virtue's gloss will stain with any soil, is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will, whose edge hath power to cut, whose will still wills, it should none spare that come within his power. Some merry mocking lord belike, is it so? They say so most, that most his humors know. Such short-lived wits do wither as they grow. Who are the rest? The young Dumaine, a well-accomplished youth of all that virtue loved for virtue loved. Most power to do most harm, least knowing ill. For he hath wit to make an ill shape good, and shape to win grace, though he had no wit. I saw him at the Duke Alençon's once, and much too little of that good I saw is my report to his great worthiness. Another of these students at that time was there with him, and if I have heard a truth, Baroon they call him, but a merrier man within the limit of becoming mirth I never spent an hour's talk with all. His eye begets occasion for his wit. For every object that the one doth catch, the other turns to a mirth-moving jest, which his fair tongue, conceits expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words that aged ears play truant at his tales, and younger hearings are quite ravished, so sweet and voluble is his discourse. God bless my ladies! Are they all in love? That every one her own hath garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise? Here comes Boyette. Now, what admittance, Lord? Navarre had notice of your fair approach, and he and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, thus much have I learned. He rather means to lodge you in the field, like one that comes here to besiege his court, than seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. And to the King, Baroon, Longueville, and Dumaine in attendance. Here comes Navarre. Fair princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair? I give you back again, and welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide field to base to be mine. You shall be welcome, madam, to my court. I will be welcome then. Conduct me thither. Hear me, dear lady, I have sworn an oath. Our lady help my lord, he'll be forsworn. Not for the world, fair madam, by my will. Why, will shall break it. Will, and nothing else. Your lady should be ignorant what it is. 
were my lord. So his ignorance were wise, where now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. Tis deadly sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold. To teach a teacher ill beseemeth me. Vouchsafe to read the purpose of my coming, and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away, for you'll prove perjured if you make me stay. Did I not dance with you at Brabant once? Did I not dance with you in Brabant once? I know you did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. Tis long of you that spur me with such questions. Your, your wit's too hot. It speeds too fast. Twill tire. Not till it leave the rider in the mire. What time of day? The hour that fools should ask. Now fair befall your mask. Fair fall the face it covers. And send you many lovers. Amen. So you be none. Nay, then I will be gone. He leaves me. Madam... Your father here doth intimate the payment of a hundred thousand crowns, being but the one half of an entire sum dispersed by my father in his wars. But say that he or we, as neither have, received that sum, yet there remains unpaid a hundred thousand more, in surety of the which one part of Aquitaine is bound to us, although not valued to the money's worth. If then the king your father will restore but that one half which is unsatisfied, we will give up our right in Aquitaine and hold fair friendship with his majesty. But that, it seems, he little purposeth, for here he doth demand to have repaid a hundred thousand crowns, and not demands, on payment of a hundred thousand crowns, to have his title live in Aquitaine, which we much rather had depart withal, and have the money by our father lent, than Aquitaine, so gelded as it is, Dear Princess, were not his request so far from reason's yielding, your fair self should make a yielding against some reason in my breast, and go well satisfied to France again. You do the king my father too much wrong, and wrong the reputation of your name, and so unseeming to confess receipt of that which hath so faithfully been paid. I do protest I never heard of it. And if you prove it, I'll repay it back or yield up Aquitaine. We arrest your word. Boyette, you can produce acquittances for such a sum from special officers of Charles, his father. Satisfy me so. So please, your grace, the packet is not come. Where that and other specialties are bound, uh, tomorrow you shall have sight of them. It, it shall suffice me. At which interview, all liberal reason I will yield unto. Meantime, receive such welcome at my hand as honor without breach of honor may make tender of to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, within my gates, but here without you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbor in my house. Your own good thoughts excuse me and farewell. Tomorrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort your grace. Thy own wish wish I thee in every place. Lady, I will commend you to mine own heart. Pray you, do my commendations. I would be glad to see it. I would you heard it groan. Is the fool sick? Sick at the heart. Alack, let it blood. Would that do it good? My physic says I. Will you prick it with your eye? Non point with my knife. Now God save thy life and yours from long living. I cannot say thanksgiving. Enter Dumaine. Sir, I, I pray a word with you. What lady is that same? Well, the heir of Alençon, Catherine her name, a gallant lady, Monsieur Fair, you will, and to Longueville. I beseech you a word, what is she in the white? A woman sometimes, and you saw her in the light. Perchance light in the light, I desire her name. She hath but one for herself, to desire that were a shame. Pray you, sir, whose daughter? Her mother's, I have heard. God's blessing on your beard. Good sir, be not offended, she is an heir of Falconbridge. Nay, my collar is ended. She is a most sweet lady. Not unlike, sir, that may be. Yeah, I've got about, uh, I've got about 40 more lines. Can you wait? Go for it. No hurry. What's her name in the cap? Rosalind, by good hap. Is she wedded or no? To her will, sir, or no? You are welcome, sir. Adieu. Farewell to me, sir. And welcome to you. That last is Baroon, the merry madcap lord, 
Not a word with him, but a jest. And every jest but a word. It was well done of you to take him at his word. I was as willing to grapple as he was to board. Two hot sheeps, Mary. And wherefore not ships? No sheep, sweet lamb, unless we feed on your lips. You sheep, and I pasture. Shall that finish the jest? So you grant pasture for me. Ooh, ooh, no, 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 no. Not so, gentle beast. My lips are not so common, though several they be. Or belonging to whom? To my fortunes and me. Good wits will be jangling, but gentles agree. This civil war of wits were better used, much better used, on Navarre and his bookmen, for here tis abused. If my observation, which very seldom lies, by the heart still rhetoric to closed with eyes, deceive me not now, Navarre is infected. With what? With that which we lovers entitle affected. Your reason? Why all his behaviors did make their retire to the court of his eye peeping through desire. His heart's like an agate with your print impressed, proud with his form in his eye pride expressed. His tongue, all impatient to speak and not see, did stumble with haste in his eyesight to be. All senses to that sense did make their repair to feel only looking on fairest of fair. Methought all his senses were locked in his eye as jewels in crystal for some prince to buy, who tendering their own worth from where they were glassed, did point you to buy them along as you passed. His face, face's own margin did quote such amazes that all eyes saw his eyes enchanted with gazes. I'll give you Aquitaine and all that is his, and you give him for my sake but one loving kiss. Come to our pavilion. Boyette is disposed, but to speak that in words which his eye hath disclosed. I only have made a mouth of his eye by adding a tongue which I know will not lie. Thou art an old love monger, and speakest skillfully. He is Cupid's grandfather, and learns news of him. Then was Venus like her mother, for her father is but grim. Do you hear my mad wenches? No. What then do you see? Aye, our way to be gone. You are too hard for me.